Hello and welcome to NTA Nationwide. I am Jumma Yasov. We kick off with the CNG rollout simulation as the federal government has announced free conversion of vehicles for the road transport unions as part of conversion mobilization of the Presidential Compressed Natural Gas Initiative. The program coordinator for Laring Oguro disclosed this while flagging of rollout to stimulate the adoption of compressed national gas for transportation in Nigeria. Haruna Mohammed reports that the rollout program, which started in Kaduna, targets about 200,000 conversions annually. Go places, go transport. We drive to thrive. The transportation sector remains critical in driving the Nigeria's economy, and the Presidential Compressed Natural Gas Initiative came handy. The Presidential Compressed Natural Gas Initiative is a component of palliative provided by President Bola Ahmed Tinobu to the masses as a result of the subsidy removal. And the team is here in Kaduna interfacing with critical stakeholders towards ensuring the initiative is embraced. Program Execution Coordinator for Laren Ororum disclosed free conversion for the road transport unions as rollout to stimulate the adoption of Compressed Natural Gas Initiative for transport. A gesture, the Global Vice President, International Transport Federation, and other leaders eulogized President Bola Ahmed Tunubu for putting them in the forefront of the initiative. <laughs> Having handed over kits to the union, signing of Miranda of Understanding by the CNG team and partner conversion sites. If we make their running costs cheaper, the idea is for them to translate these savings onto the end user by making the uh, transportation costs cheaper. Automatically, the price of vehicle will come down because from here to Abuja, you can buy a fuel worth 40,000, 45,000, depends on how the vehicle is. But with this conversion, it will come down. Automatically, the price of vehicle, uh, passengers and vehicles should come down in the nation. The Presidential Compressed Natural Gas Initiative. Nigerians are implored to embrace the initiative as it provides cleaner, cheaper transportation system for all. In Kaduna, I'm Haruna Mohammed, NTA News. A major information technology outage hits global business and disrupting transactions around the world. The development has caused chaos in banking, securities, outfits, airlines, operations, including media outlets. Now, several European airports with customers have been told to expect delays at a check-in. Check -in. In the IT outrage also hits companies grounding flights in the U.S., derailing TV broadcasts in the U.K., hitting telecommunications in Australia. And 50th students of the Federal Government Technical College, Garki, have received laptops in addition to undergoing six months' courses on artificial intelligence and robotics. This is being facilitated by the Senior Special Assistant to the President on Vocational techn Technical and Entrepreneurship Education. Abiola Arunguna Dede, in line with the renewed hope agenda of President Bola Tinubu, Ngozi Technical reports. The gesture, according to some of the students, is unimaginable. To others, it is a dream come true, as they listen keenly to their guests. The senior special assistant to the president remarks that the initiative is to enable the students cue into the current trend in the use of artificial intelligence as well as robotic technology to advance growth and development. We'll be giving out 25 courses. Um, in artificial intelligence in a partnership with Lorenzo and 25 in um, robotics. With the laptops and license to practice after six months intensive courses provided by Lorenzo Group, the students' entrepreneurship capacity will have been well developed. If you look at countries like Germany, USA, um, Korea, Japan, they are going really far and vast with robotics and artificial intelligence. So it's, it's about time that we too. I was shocked at first, but then I became very, very, very happy because for a long time I've been wanting an opportunity like this and I finally got it. I feel so happy and glad about this opportunity. This is going to be very helpful to my education and also to help me um, financially. You are motivated to 
join the artificial intelligence field because I'm very assured that I will learn a lot from it. And not just them just telling us with mouth, but giving us this gadget to be able to fulfill our dreams in this field. The school principal explains that the benefiting students were selected from the existing robotics club in the school. Ngozi Technico, NTN News. Quite excited looking students there. Meanwhile, the National Commission for Almajiri and Out-of-School Children is set to enroll 10,000 out-of-school children in the Federal Capital Territory with the inauguration of 31 out-of-school marshals. Salwa Khalil Mohammed reports that this is part of government's effort to revitalize the Sangaya system of education in Nigeria. The Zangaya or Almajari is an Islamic system of education which has been mainstreamed into the conventional system to ensure that no child is left behind. His Excellency has taken an oath that no child before the end of this government will be seen roaming the streets of Nigeria. Every single child that is of age school must be in school. So it, we are duty bound as Nigerians to ensure that we extend the same gesture given to us to those children that are vulnerable, that are on the street, to the opens and to the less privileged ones. Now, in fulfillment of this commitment that the federal government through the National Commission for Almajiri and out-of-school children is sending men and women as marshals to every community across the country to watch out for out-of-school children, then liaise with parents and community head to enroll them in school. And what we do is we domesticate. We just go to the Zangaya where the Malam has been teaching, renovate the school, make it a boarding school and build his house for him there and we do not take him out of his um, um, comfort of where he is used to. So they have accepted it and we are working on that. This will be carried out in the 36 states, starting with the Federal Capital Territory, where 31 marshals were inaugurated, a win for the education sector. In Abuja, Salwa Kalal Ibrahim, NTA News. Efforts to addressing issues critical to supporting fundamental learning and equitable access to quality life for children with special needs is gaining attention once again. The Child Care Thrust Center and Petra Speech and Early Childhood Developmental Center signed a memorandum of understanding to foster collaboration and enhance services for children with special needs a milestone in advancing quality of care and education for children with developmental challenges in Nigeria. Elizabeth Omori examines the objectives of the agreement. In 2002, a 600 million naira site for the Child Care Trust was formally launched as a pet project of late Stella Obasojo. 16 years after and still standing strong, the Child Care Trust has continued to provide soccer to children with Down syndrome, autism, cerebral palsy, disability, and many more. And this agreement, signed by members of the Board of Trustees of Child Care Trust and founder of Petra Speech, Princess Nwakego Ibrahim Pam, is to leverage their expertise and resources to create an inclusive and supportive environment for children with special needs. This move underscores a shared commitment to foster holistic development of this category of children. It also aims to provide speech, language, occupational and physical therapies to children at Child Care Trust. Other objectives include support for parents and caregivers through provision of insights and strategies to aid development of their children, staff training and capacity building to promote sharing of knowledge in evidence-based practices with staff of child trust care to enhance their skills and knowledge in working with children with speech language and developmental challenges. In Abuja, Elizabeth Omori, NG News. And joining me in the studio now to discuss further on the topic is Princess Nwakego Ibrahim Pam. She's the founder, executive director, Retros Petra Speech and Early Childhood Developmental Center. You're welcome to Nationwide. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure. 
yeah, it's been a while we've heard about child, you know, care trust since the founder, Mrs. Stella Obasanjo, died. So how's, how has it fared over the years and why are you reviving it now? Uh, thank you for that question. Uh, it has fared, um, how will I say, it has been under the weather. You know, when the founder and the vision carrier dies, a business tends to lose its focus and the support that comes with the founder. And so that's what happened to Child Care Trust. When Her Excellency, late Mrs. Stella Obasanjo died, so did her vision die with her because there was no other uh, group of people to take the vision along with her. But I want to give credit to the board of trustees who stayed on after her death. And they are um, Dr. Joyce Uguchuku, Ambassador uh, Oluwale Koka, uh, Madam Laide uh, Salako, Senator Eme uh, Ekaite, for staying on after Her Excellency passed on. And they've been keeping the center uh, alive. And um, when I came into Nigeria, a friend of mine invited me for a birthday party at the center. And that was the first time I stepped my foot into the center. And when I got there, my heart lifted with joy because that's something I've been planning for over 20 years to have. And, once, oh. and so when I found the center, my spirit just uh, took to it. So I started discussing uh, collaboration with the director of the center, Mrs. Harmony. And then we negotiated for the next nine months and eventually we signed an MOA. And why? Okay, okay. Can we talk about this agreement, you know, going to fostering the development, you know, of children with special needs? Indeed, they are special children. Yes. Now, is this MOA strictly addressing speech-related concerns, or does it extend to other aspects of their development also? It's a holistic uh, MOA. It takes care of the, all the children that comes to the center in a holistic manner. We take each child and develop a personalized curriculum for them according to their disability. So the collaboration is based on that the Petra Speech and Early Childhood Cent uh, Developmental Center will provide all the necess necessary medical, clinical, uh, social, cognitive assessment testing for the children to enable the center place the children in the right group for them to learn and to make them functional in society. Like you know, there is a large spectrum of disability that we, we have. Yes. We have that of Down syndrome, autism, we have cerebral palsy, we have uh, impaired hearing and sight. But at the center, what we want to do is to make sure that no child is left behind, that mm -hmm. each child is uh, cut off for according to their unique needs. So that is what we're aiming to do right now. And that is where we come in as expert to help to make sure that uh, the policies and regulations of handling special needs children are followed strict, uh, strictly. And also to make sure that we develop a curriculum that, it, that affects the child in a positive way. And that is why uh, we, we came to an agreement to collaborate. And so we're reaching out to stakeholders out there to join us to make sure that the vision and the dreams of the late Mrs. Stella Basenjo can be reactivated and that the vulnerable children that she had passion for will benefit to the fullest of that vision. Thank you. Okay, as parents, you know, having a special needs child is not an easy task. Yeah. How are parents, you know, taking advantage of the provision of your center to drive inclusivity for the children? And the child care trust is still waxing strong, catering to the needs of these awesome children. So are parents getting the needed support they need, actually? Um, no. I want to start with no, so that we start from a transparent um, uh, uh, stage. The parents are not having the full advantage of the center because they themselves are not fully involved. Let me go back a little bit and talk about the taboos and the denial syndrome that happens to families of special needs children. The society we are in right now has placed a taboo or a rejection uh, syndrome on families that have special needs children. And so the families themselves do not want to showcase their children. They are not proud of their children. In most Why? Why are they not proud of them? Because society ha ha has this uh, impression that uh, either the parents have committed the sin or there is a curse on the child or there is something wrong with them and somebody's superstitious, superstitious, superstitious beliefs, beliefs and that has put 
an obstacle into the early intervention of these special needs children. Like I said to parents, since I've been in special needs education for over 30 years in different continents and having seen different races and the reactions of parents in different continents, I tend to believe that culturally, special needs families here, are, uh, they face a lot of obstacle to be able to function in a society like us. We need to accept them. We need to accept the children. We need to love them. We need to have that uh, empathy for the families because having a special needs child in your family, it's financially consuming and emotionally indeed, indeed. Uh, uh, overwhelming for the mother. I want to talk about the mothers of special needs children. These women are special. We need to uh, raise our terms for them. Taking care of a special needs child, they deny themselves. Most of them do not have uh, careers. Most of them do not have social life. They have to be with these children 24-7. Most of them, many of them, have also lost their marriages because the men walk away. They cannot bear uh, the pressure, financial pressure and emotional pressure of raising a special needs child in their family. Okay. So, Yes, continue. We so, have like 30, this, in 30 seconds. Okay, Orlando. this is why a lot of parents just are looking for a center or a home where they can take the children out of the view of the public and they leave them. And once they leave them there, it takes a lot of coercing and begging and uh, talking to them for them to want to be part of the children's life. But at the Child Care uh, Trust Center, we are insisting that we will not only admit the child, we're admitting the child and the parents. They have to be fully involved. They will have a, a, an activity laid out for them that they will monitor the growth of their children and also get training so that when we send the children home, the home environment and the school environment will be the same. So that when we send them home, when they're bringing them back, they have not deteriorated from where we, we, they left the school from. And that is very important for the development of this special needs child. And, and it's quite commendable, the awareness you are raising on special needs children. And Thank you very they should be treated. Work ago, Ibrahim Palm, founder, executive director of Petra Speech and Early Childhood Developmental Center. Thank, Thank you. you so much for coming and Thank shedding you. light Thank on you. the issue. Can I also announce an event? We are having an event on Monday, 22nd of July, 19, 2024, at 10 a.m. at the Buhari Center. We will want a media tour of the center so that stakeholders will actually see and know what the center is all about. Okay, Thank beautiful. You. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's been a pleasure having you. Thank you. Moving on, rainfall comes as a relief from the scorching heat stroke which precedes the rainy season. It is, however, burdensome when it affects movements and means of livelihood. Now, this seems to be the trajectory in Ibadan for now, as the rains have become a daily occurrence. Kindly Omolosho is out to find out the effect and coping mechanism for various categories of people. Rainfall provides water for hydroelectric power plants, crop irrigation, and suitable conditions for many types of ecosystems. The recent daily rainfall to some of our respondents will enable crops on their farm grow with bountiful yields. It is very good that the rain is funny because it is good for a farming. It will make the agricultural product uh, to be good. Because the weather is cold. I believe there must be an alternative on how to cope with the harsh weather. It's the rainy season. It's caused cold, Qatar, and even for the children, especially. So we have to just take care of ourselves. To transporters and petty traders, the daily rainfall is affecting their businesses negatively. It's affecting because some are there that they will prefer to enter moto because moto is being covered. But well, like Morua of 18, it's covered but it's half covered. It's not affecting my own business. It's only those people that are selling clothes or selling paper. Or maybe those people that are selling Bible. That's those people that are affected. Well, as the rains drop on a daily basis, it behoves on the people to maximize the potentials rather than the discomfort to their advantage. Kendi Omolosho, NT News. Kendi is right now at Agodi Gate area of Ibadan where he's, he looks at the coping mechanism of the people with the persistent rains. Kendi, it's been a wet day, day in Abuja since yesterday and today and I, I believe it must be more in you know, areas like Ibadan. Have you had a dose of the rains in Ibadan lately and how is it affecting business and people moving around?
Well, in Ibadan here, residents of Ibadan, Oyo State, Southwest Nigeria, have had to contend with daily rainfall pattern in the last one week. Although it is a rainy season with predictions of heavy rains, the frequency of rainfall over the ancient sprawling metropolis of Ibadan cannot be ignored. The almost perpetual drizzle with waterlogged spots here and there has become a challenge. Many small scale businesses, especially those that operate in open spaces, welders, open food vendors, and occurs of sundry items are almost grounded by the drizzling rains. Intercity transport is now unpredictable for many commuters and motorists alike, including pedestrians. This is no doubt having a negative impact on small and micro businesses in Ibadan, as the level of patronage has dropped significantly. Owners of SMEs lament the losses incurred due to this natural phenomenon. In fact, one of such people is here with me. Uh, can you share with us your experience with the rains that has been... Well, it's, really, it's been crazy. This rain, this rainfall has been crazy for the past few days now. It has really, it has even allowed me to go to the music studio because I'm a musical artist. I sing songs. Okay. So it has even allowed me to go to the music studio. This past few days now, I've been, just been developing some techniques to record. I just figured about this application, Voloco musical application to record. So that has been the app I've been using. Obviously, it's not a professional application enough to give me the quality I want as an artist. So I don't know, but at least I've developed a style for me for now. Pending the rainfall. You know, pending the, pending the time this rain will keep falling. So, so the rain has brought ideas for you to... Yeah, it has brought ideas for me to record. At least this local application has been good for me to record. And I've also developed my skills more in singing and rapping. Past few days, I tell you I developed how to rap. I just turned out to rap. I just turned out to be a rapper out of using Voloco. Okay. I just shout okay. out to them. Okay. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Uh, that's the situation here in Ibadan. The rain has been coming on a daily basis and it's affecting businesses. One of oh, such so businesses that is affecting, affecting just shared his experience with us and how he has developed skills to surmount the challenge. You know, kind day, we always pray for rain to come and at times it's a blessing most of the time, but when it comes, at times it comes with its own peculiar issues. You know, when we were children, we used to say, rain, rain, go away, come back another time. I hope it gets better and people have, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, made, it's made it possible for people to move around and go about their businesses. Thank you kindly for your input. Thank you. Now let's move to other issues as leadership of Nigeria's health sector is fine-tuning the process of strengthening IT and make it affordable for citizens at the 5th Annual Legislative Summit on Health holding in Abuja. Coordinating Minister of Health and Social Welfare, Professor Mohammed Ali Pati, reaffirms government's commitment to leading a governance that prioritizes health and ensures accountability of resources mobilized. Ulushe Adebo reports. Nigeria. Nigeria is aging towards meeting the Sustainable Development Goals targets on universal health coverage. This legislative summit on health is a networking platform where legislators from the 36 states of the Federation and the OFCT, as well as parliamentary staff, is primarily for a peer review mechanism. We must work together to ensure that effective healthcare system are accessible. While commendable strides have been made, daunting challenges persist. Issues of corruption, that's a governance issue because to use the limited resources we have, at least on health, we need to mitigate the tendencies to let the meager public resources get diverted to some other things. The Ministry of Health also brought participants up to speed on latest programs in the quest to build a resilient health system. Do we need more strengthening, especially at some national level, to ensure quality of care? And, and this is part of responsibility of the legislators. Uh, this summit is very timely. Countries that have been heavily relying on uh, donor funding to operate the health system are currently struggling because the priorities have changed and the need to rethink health financing domestically. They've talked about um, mandatory, how to make health insurance mandatory, right? So I think that's one of the key things that we are going to be looking at, following up with them um, after this summit. The Legislative Summit on Health 
fifth in the series is themed improving legislative stewardship and accountability for universal health coverage in Abuja, Olusheye, Adiago, and Tienis. The Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offences Commission, ICPC, is collaborating with the Federal Ministry of Health and Social Welfare and other relevant authorities to enhance quality health care service delivery to all Nigerians. Let's bring you that report now. Let's be wondering what has ICPC, an anti-graft agency, got to do with providing health care? Well, it might equally interest you to know that Nigeria spends more money on health per capita than several countries. But World Bank Global Analysis shows that these countries have better health indices. Nigeria, for instance, spends more than Zimbabwe on health per capita, but the latter has higher life expectancy. This raises question to whether it is a system failure or a question of bad apples. To address these challenges, the ICPC organizes a forum where interested individuals and groups meet minds on how to bridge the gap in health sector. At the end of this conference, participants will be equipped with the necessary attitudes and tools to help diminish corruption in primary health care. A systemic sort of look so that we prevent the circumstances that makes it easier for people Experts say the government has done a lot in all areas to take the country where it ought to be, but sadly the output rarely matches the input. The maximum output, it has not gotten to, to that, and what is the reason? It's corruption. Let us start to think of corruption not only as I don't touch government money. When you don't do what you are supposed to do as a way deal, it is corruption. With the theme, Engendering Corruption-Free Primary Healthcare Delivery in Nigeria, a template that will address the healthcare needs of all, came on board. For security matters now, the commitment of the Nigerian army to serving the nation both on and over the battlefield demonstrates its resolve to contribute to the betterment of the society, especially in areas affected by Boko Haram insurgency. As part of the gesture, some communities in Adama and Bono states are benefiting the free medical outreach and other humanitarian assistance by the Nigerian Army 28th Tax Force, Chibok, while marking the 2024 Nigerian Army Day celebration. Simon Asha reports. Despite the zone of peace and normalcy in communities affected by Boko Haram insurgency in the Northeast, it lives in its wake. Destruction of lives and property, among which is a retired army officer, warrant officer Adama Kitimu, whose house was destroyed in Gula due to his gallantry during the combat insurgency operations of the Nigerian army. However, the respite has sufficed for him among other hundreds of people. Following the medical outrage of the Nigerian army, 28th Tax Force Brigade Chibok, as his house was rebuilt with the people examined of virus, sicknesses and diseases, especially pregnant women and people with side problems. I thank the Nigerian army for coming to my rescue. The commander of the Tax Force Brigade Chiba, Brigadier General Bede Amoko, says the gesture demonstrates the Nigerian army's resolve to contribute its quarter to the betterment of the communities it serves to enhance their healthy living, as treatments, among other medicaments, provided free of charge. Furthermore, the event also affords the Nigerian Army the opportunity to interact in a more friendly way with our host communities through its corporate social responsibility. To further ensure the academic excellence of its host communities, the Brigade also shares educational materials to schools under its formation for the good of all. Time now to go nationwide as we hit Lagos. Adiola Kami Akere has this next set of reports. Hello, Adiola. It's good to see you. To go nationwide. It's good to see you. Hello, Jumai. Good to see you too. 
The burden of preventable diseases still remains high in the country, thereby leading to many avoidable deaths. Experts believe youth engagement in reversing the trend is key. And Hingino John Adams will tell us how government is involving youth to reduce the burden. In spite of appreciable progress in the treatment and prevention of cervical cancer, hepatitis B, HIV, hypertension and stroke, these diseases still pose significant threats to many Nigerians. The federal government, through the country's Apex Research Institute, is using youth to find viable solutions. Meet Faith Ihediwa, a visually impaired young lady. She is one of those using their craft and talent to create awareness on hypertension and stroke through music. Just as Chike and Mobat said, that you don't need music to enter your spirit. Music no need permission to enter your spirit. For these experts, promoting the culture of routine medical checks will help in the fight. HIV self-testing is almost everywhere in the country. When we, at the time we started to, um, six years ago, you need almost about 10,000 Naira to buy the kits. It's not even readily available, but now, by going to the pharmacy, just every pharmacy in the country now, you can pick up the HIV safe test. If you bring spaces for communities to contribute, they will bring their solutions, they will bring their voice, and they themselves will contribute solutions that will magnify healing that is necessary for our fellow Nigerians. They're young people in Nigeria who have great ideas, and we need to listen to those ideas, nurture them, and... and test them in the field so that there can be local solutions really helping us to increase HIV testing. With youths like Faith Ihediwa using their potentials to create more awareness on diseases, it is believed that Nigeria will soon reach the desired destination. In Lagos, Hinginu John Adams, NTA News. Now let's talk empowerment. The idea of making women self-reliant with the necessary skills to contribute their quota to national development is considered pivotal, especially with the current economic realities. Recognizing this importance, the Police Officers' Wives Association, POA, has inaugurated an empowerment scheme to assist more than 20 of its members. Adejoke Odeka reports that beneficiaries received starter packs for small-scale businesses. The initiative aimed at empowering the women and promoting a sense of security among them is also expected to reduce over-dependence and alleviate poverty. Providing this equipment ranging from fashion to finance and food storage facilities is the Police Officers Wives Association POWER's way of ensuring that its members are well equipped with the right resources in order for them to support their homes while achieving personal goals. It is no longer fashion for police officers' wives to be called housewives. They must have something to put on the table. The essence of this empowerment is to make sure that while their husbands are out there securing the nation, they also have something to do. Some of the beneficiaries expressed appreciation for the scheme and promised to make adequate use of the equipment to better their lot. Wow, I'm so excited. I'm short of words. I cannot thank her enough. God has used her mightily to reach out to all the masses. I'll use it and so I'll use it for my business, my fashion designer. I thank God for it. I will, I'm very happy, happy today. Representative of the national president of POA said the scheme is designed to provide for more women, especially the underprivileged. My advice for them is to make use of whatever they've been given because the wife of the Inspector General of Police has so much interest on the women and education and health. The empowerment scheme is also in line with the present administration's renewed hope initiative of ensuring food sufficiency, enhancing productivity and creativity for economic sustainability. In Lagos, Adejoke Odeka, NTA News. And that's it from Lagos. Nationwide will continue with Ladidi e Musa in Meiduguri. After this break, please stay with us. Real government.
Welcome to my degree. Glad to have you join us. Borno State Government's resolve to resuscitate moribund industries in Borno as part of post-insurgency economy recovery has started yielding results in as nitrile shoes and tyranny factory commences export of hides. This came to light during Governor Babagano Morizulum's visit to the factory in my degree. Mohamed Gone reports. On assumption of office, Governor Bagana Omar Azilim had taken measures to resuscitate Maribound industries in the state to create jobs for the teaming youth and to boost the economy of the state. Towards this aim, the state authorities entered into public-private partnership arrangement with an indigenous firm, which has since yielded the desired results. The factory is now operating at about 70% capacity. And then they are ready for export. Let me commend our partner, which is Tatabe and Co, or partner of the Bono State Government, he's son of the soil. Under no circumstances will allow this industry to fail. The shoes factory was the hype of activities during the visit as workers were seen making different types of shoes and school bags. In the tenery section, the governor was conducting round and brief on the various units involved in processing hides and skins into leathers. The tenery is said to have the capacity to process about 100,000 skins monthly for local use and export. We shall again sit down with the Ministry for Commerce and then see what are the gaps so that we shall supplement the effort of the, our partners, of our private partners, so that we can work together in order to create job employment, ensure that the state government also benefit from this program and most importantly create wealth in the state. The governor also expressed satisfaction with the management of the factory assuring the commitment of the state government to sustainability of the factory. In Maiduguri, Mahmoud Goni, NTA News. To security matters now, 14 suspects have been arrested within and outside Maiduguri, the Borno State capital, for, com for committing various criminal offences, including a case of murder. Personnel of the Nigerian Police Force Borno State Command made the arrest with a call on resident to always cooperate with the police for more successes. Defendant correspondent Abu Bakr Musa reports. It wasn't intentional, but I think it's my destiny. I hope I will be forgiven. This is Usa Kahel Adamu, an inhabitant of Kwaiakusar local government area of Borno State, confessing how he assaulted his paternal grandfather with a hoe that led to his death on the spot. The other 13 suspects also admitted to have committed various offenses ranging from theft of submersible water pump, criminal intimidation, culpable homicide, drug peddling as well as syndicates involved in vandalization and theft of public infrastructure. The Borno State Police Command attributed the breakthroughs achieved so far to intelligence sharing as well as strategic planning of the Nigerian police force, calling on residents to always consider the police as a partner in progress. The command remains committed in ensuring public safety and security and further warns criminals to desist from their nefarious acts or face the wrath of the law. All the suspects shall be prosecuted as soon as investigations are completed. In Meiduguri, Abu Bakr Musa, NCA News. That's it from Meiduguri. Nationwide continues with Jumai in Abuja. Stay with us. Now, moving on, Akwa Ibom State is engaging various modalities to address hunger through agricultural strategies as part of the Arise agenda of Governor Umo Eno's administration. The aim is to cushion the current food crisis of the country. Umo Basi Edit tells us more. Apart from encouraging mechanized farming and providing improved seedlings and support to farmers, the Kwaibom State Government is also boosting 24,000 bags of 25kg rice to that received from the federal government for onward distribution to local government councils in the state. A hungry populace can lead to unrest, making food availability, affordability and security a priority for this administration. The state government is also boosting its economic frontiers through its planned state-owned Ibom in Lagos. 
Meanwhile, as the Kwaibom state government through its AK Cares is intervening in agriculture and other sectors as championed by the Ministry of Economic Development, over 100,000 families drawn from the social register will have already received and others will be receiving free food items from the state government through the bulk purchase agency. It is forward thinking to begin to do Ibom Tower in Lagos to begin to bring down the Aquaibom House, which is in Central Business District, and in its place put a three-star hotel there, so that the state can earn revenue. About 5,600 farmers are going to receive uh, various inputs to include their old chicks, um, juveniles, and feeds. This food intervention by the government aims at cushioning the effect of the hardship currently faced by Nigerians and to reduce extreme hunger and poverty as stipulated by the Sustainable Development Goal 1. In Uyo, Umo, Basadid, NT News. And still on Nationwide, we are now joining Uduak Obong, Achibong in Benin for more on Nationwide. Hello, Uduak. Hi, and welcome to Benin. Plans have been concluded by the Doe State Government to rid the state of illegal firearms as part of government's determination to ensure the safety of citizenry. Governor Godwin Obaseke disclosed this after emerging from a closed-door security meeting which lasted several hours at the government house. Good luck, Enaini has the details. While in the meeting behind closed doors at the ESCO chambers, council reviewed the security situation in the state, looking specifically at incidents relating to security in the first part of the year and projecting for the months ahead. Council, however, noticed a decline in security incidents such as courtism, homicide, and kidnapping, which is the top three crimes, and vowed to increase the tempo of activities. Governor Baseki, while addressing journalists, said Council has given the team the list of all reports received to date on the activities of Okaigelis in all the different communities for action to be taken. The homes of identified members of those gangs will be raided. We will intensify our moves and activities to locate people who are keeping arms in the communities and in their homes. He says council will be meeting weekly over the next four or five weeks with members of the security council of the identified local government with a view to understanding in greater details what is going on there and narrowing its investigation to communities where these incidents occurred very frequently. Funsho Adeboye is the adopted police commissioner. The new anti cortism law is quite effective Highly commendable. Council advised those with unauthorized arms to turn it in voluntarily as failure to adhere could attract severe sanctions. In Benin, good luck in Aini. NT News. Residents of some areas in Adoikiti will soon overcome the incessant challenges whenever it rains heavily with this channelization and dredging of some waterways across the state. This is as a result of about 500 million naira expended on the project by the state government. Luke Misani has the details. The age-long flooding challenge usually experienced by Bolo Aduro, Onola and Balema communities in Adwekiti every year has now come to an end as the state government has commenced the dredging and channelization of Elemi and Orphan rivers located in these communities. The rivers, which usually claim lives and destroy property of residents every rainy season, is getting the attention of the state government. And uh, so far so good, we have spent half a billion naira to ensure that uh, we do not uh, uh, take the risk of uh, uh, allowing or uh, uh, making uh, floods and uh, erosion of water to affect our people. The residents who could not hide their joy on the giant steps of the state government 
said the gesture will put an end to the yearly flooding and many residents who had left their homes for the fear of being submerged or their properties being destroyed would come back home. We'll be facing serious problems to the extent that our people who reside around here will vacate their homes whenever it rains. But today, we are celebrating. The job was not only executed, it was perfectly done. They also appealed to the governor to assist in the construction of drainages for free flow of water into these rivers. With the huge investment on this project, residents are admonished to desist from dumping refuse into the drainage to avert flooding. In Adwekiti, Olukemi, Sony, NTA News. That's it from Benin. It's back to Dumai in Abuja for continuation of Nationwide. Thank you so much, Uduak. Back in Abuja, the Social Democratic Party, SDP, says it welcomes constructive criticism while it urged the drivers of the nation's policy to consider divergent views as the hallmark of a healthy state. The party was commenting on the backlash received by the former chief whip of the Senate, Mohamed Alin Dume, from his party over what some considered as uncharitable remarks against the current administration. Kenneth Nani reports. Reacting to the removal of the Senate Chief Whip Alin Dume and a call by the APC leadership asking him to leave the party on the account of his media outburst regarding some economic policies of the federal government. The SDP says criticisms form a fundamental aspect of thriving democracies as the other view affords leaders the broader perspectives on national aspirations. We in the SDP we are making a call and we are inviting Senator Undume openly to come and join the Social Democratic Party. We will work with him. The party acknowledged President Bola Tinubu's antecedents as a true Democrat and urged the party leadership to copy his leadership style, which promotes healthy debate on issues of national importance. SDP is not in conflict with the current leadership of the country, the, the President Bola Hamed Tinubu. We are not in conflict with the National Assembly. We are not in conflict with the judiciary. We will have a national duty, an obligation as a party to draw the attention of the executive, to draw the attention of the National Assembly, to draw the attention of the judiciary. Together, we shall continue to advocate for the right of Nigerians and ensure our democracy remains vibrant and inclusive. The party then went on to commend President Tinubu on the Supreme Court judgment that granted financial autonomy to the local government, which it believes will open up development in the grassroots. Kenneth Nanim, NTA News. Thank you, Kenneth. Now let's join Comfort AIM in our Enugu Network Center for the next set of reports. Hello, Comfort. Good afternoon and welcome to Enugu Network Center. Enugu State Government and an Environmental Advocacy Agency have met to develop Enugu State Climate Policy and Action Plan. Organizers of the meeting believe that with their wealth of knowledge and expertise, the implementation of resolutions reached will help mitigate climate change in the state. Chika Ogo's report is here presented. Climate change has become a global challenge with its consequential impact on livelihood and ecosystem, distorting national and subnational socio-economic values and activities. Enugu State is not left out of the threat as it has been witnessing challenges in weather patterns, such as variation in rainfalls and dry season, as well as increased frequency of flooding, endangering lives and properties. To address this challenge, the state government convened environmental advocates, scientists, policymakers, the academia, among other key players, to engage and develop science-based policy and strategic climate action plan to help address the challenges associated with climate change. The climate action plan will serve as a framework guiding our action today and in the years to come. 
This gathering marks a historic milestone in our collective endeavor to safeguard the environment and secure a sustainable future for our United States. Organizers of the workshop are optimistic that if resolutions from the meeting are implemented, it can increase generation of renewable energy, build climate resilience, create jobs, and position Enugu State as number one in green energy transition and development. We also want to develop a framework that will enable the government to be able to attract or to mobilize a substantial climate finance to take action. On the way forward, they identified tree planting and prevention of bush burning as some measures that can help engender a cleaner environment and limit the impact of climate change on agriculture and livelihood. In Enugu, Chiegono Aro, NTA News. In pursuant of better health care service delivery for Nigerians, the federal government has commenced the assessment of facilities in its health institutions nationwide. The permanent secretary, Federal Ministry of Health and Social Welfare, made this known during a one-day walking visit to the national hospitals in Enugu State. The report is here presented. The permanent secretary, Federal Ministry of Health and Social Welfare, visited federal health institutions in Enugu and inaugurated projects and medical equipment procured to improve the health needs of the people. This visit is part of our working document for us to decide and determine which areas we need to focus on more. In 2024, under the 2024 appropriation, we are looking into infrastructure and equipment and which is what we are doing for most of our hospitals across the six geopolitical zones. The Chief Medical Director and that of the Federal Neuropsychiatric Hospital commended the federal government's initiative to develop the four health pillars, assuring of their readiness to pursue its objectives. The priority of the current law management committee are centered on excellent patient care, staff welfare, and infrastructural and environmental renewal. Now you can come to psychiatric hospital, see a medical officer or see a family physician and get treated. So you don't have to have a mental illness to come in here. They enumerated other services rendered and called for assistance to enable them address their challenges. Accreditation of newly established College of Nursing Science and that of midwifery were among their requests. In Enugu, Susan Eze, NTA New. That's a packet from Enugu Network Center is back to Dumai in Abuja for more reports on Nationwide. Comfort. The Defence Headquarters has redesigned strategies aimed at curbing crude oil theft in the Niger Delta region through a comprehensive unified command structure for security agencies operating in the Niger Delta. In a statement, the Director of Defence Media Operations Major General Edward Buba states that operations will target specific areas with significant capability to boost crude oil production and ensuring transparency by international oil companies operating in the region. Similarly, in the theatres of operation, troops eliminated 125 terrorists, arrested 200 persons, apprehended 20 oil smugglers and rescued 140 kidnapped victims. In the South-South region, troops have denied perpetrators access to oil theft and saved an estimated sum of 744 million 153,000 naira, as well as recovered 120 assorted weapons and 1,793 assorted ammunition. And that's nationwide for today. Thanks so much for your time. On behalf of the crew, I am Juma Yusuf.